Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and to another video. I'm Gabriella if you're new around here and I usually do content around beauty, fashion, travel, lifestyle and luxury in general. So I'm very excited for today's video because we're going to talk all about the designer purchases that I regret and the designer purchases that I love until today. I'm going to try to focus on my most recent ones so maybe you can still find some of the items that I really enjoyed purchasing and I don't regret at all and love them and use them so much. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I'm going to start this video with the items that I really love and my favorite overall like designer items. Some of the items that I'm going to show you have been part of some campaigns that I did for my uh, influencer dash content creator job. So I'm going to let you guys know and be completely transparent on what I purchased and what I was gifted. So let's begin. First up is one of my favorite spring summer bags. And I actually kind of wear this during fall a little bit as well because it's such a versatile bag. This is my Loewe Paula's Ibiza mini bag. And this is not the traditional one. I got in like this bicolor kind of gradient style, which I thought was really unique and what sold me on the bag honestly because I thought this was like different than other little wavy bags that you see around um, and I feel like this is not such like a beach bag or like necessarily such a strong summer bag like the traditional like shell bag for example and like the bigger uh, straw versions that Loewe does so I, f I felt like this was a little bit different it was not so in your face summer bag so I could wear it more uh, throughout the seasons, I believe. So that, that's what sold me into this bag, honestly. And I felt like this was such a good size to just wear on your everyday, um, just wear around and, you know, even go to the beach as well. So it felt like a very versatile bag. And for how much it was, it was really, like for me, it was a really good deal. It was actually part of a partnership that I did with Farfetch around two years ago or in 2021, yes, in 2021, I did this partnership with Farfetch, they gave me some credit, and this was the bag that I chose to spend my credits with, and I have absolutely no regrets. I wore this bag so much and still wear throughout so, like throughout the season, spring, summer, fall, just not winter, because it's not like a winter bag, but I feel like I get so much use out of this bag that, you know, honestly, no regrets at all. One of my favorite summer bags. Okay, next up was my Dior saddlebag. I actually purchased this one, but I did purchase it pre-loved because it's very hard to get me to spend so much money on a brand new bag from the boutique because I feel like they're so overpriced and then when they, they go to the resale market, like unless we're talking about a highly coveted and hard to get bag like a Hermes or um, like some Chanel styles, I'm gonna like go to the pre-loved market first before like spending my money on a full price bag. So I found this Dior Settle. It was right when the Dior Settle styles were like starting to come back um, to like their current correct collections. So it was like it got actually a really good deal on this bag. It was less than a thousand dollars. It was in perfect condition. So it was a really good um, finding for me and the hardware was in perfect shape. And it's kind of like an um, aged gold. So when it gets like scuffs or, you know, just overall signs of aging, I think it just adds more to the identity of the bag, if that makes sense. So overall, I really like this bag. Also wore this so much. It's like a all year round bag. It's not seasonal at all. And I feel like it elevates whatever outfit that you're wearing. It is a really chic and elegant bag and super versatile. I just like one of my favorite bags for sure and it's in perfect conditions and I really love uh, this specific leather because it doesn't get scuffed so easily like you know just typical lambskin leather so you know overall one of my favorite I think you can put that on the top 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 this is my absolutely favorite designer bag that I have in my closet so far Moving on, this was a very recent addition to my um, designer bag collection, mini collection, I would say, like I don't have a big designer bag collection, but this is the mini Jodi in almond, I believe. Um, and I also got this one as part of a partnership that I did with the Australian luxury bag uh, website called Cosette. I'm gonna link it down below. I think I still have an active discount code from them. So if you wanna, if you're thinking about investing in a luxury bag, uh, make sure that you check out my discount code because I think it's like $100 off. I feel like the Mini Jodi is such a good bag. It just fits so well on that quiet luxury 
old money aesthetic because it has no logos but you can like straight away identify that this is a Bottega bag because of the intricciato leather and I feel like Bottega amongst all the luxury designer brands is one of the brands that really sticks to the quality of the manufacturing of their um, leather goods so there are so many brands that just like manufacture things uh, just like mass produce everything and I feel like Bottega is one of the brands that just really stuck to their old ways of like especially the intricciato uh, leather uh, back, back styles that they have so I feel like this is a really good brand to overall like spend your money but once again like many other designer brands i would go to the luxury to the um, pre-loved market before actually going into a boutique and spending money on these because you can find tons of mini jodies and tons of like other bottega styles on the pre-loved market so i would definitely like, go look for them or in discounted websites like cosette that you can get um, bags that are a little bit uh, below the market price so that's my recommendation overall really love this bag i feel like this is such an elegant style if you want to go to like a date night to a soiree or you know just a, a, an occasion that requires a little bit more polished look i feel like this is such a good bag because you can like carry it like this and you can carry it just like a clutch it's not like the bottega pouch which is very annoying i used to have one but i sold mine because it was very annoying to carry it around it was not a practical bag at all but this one i like it that you know just can carry on your hands or put it here it's a little bit more practical and it's versatile you can wear this all year round and it's just it just looks very cute also and very cool next up I'm gonna go into one of my favorite brands, which is Todd's. I, I've been having like a really good relationship with the PR girls at Todd's, so they gifted me a few bags over the past few years that I really love and cherish. And I feel like Todd's is a designer brand that's very luxury, very well done, and like very, very high-end, high quality. But it's not a designer brand that you see everyone using it when you go out. So it's like a very non-mainstream luxury brand. And I feel like it's one of these brands that if you know, you know. Whenever I wear this bag on my Instagram posts, people always like ask me so much. Where's this bag from? Like what's the name of the style? This is a bag that I have, I feel like for three years now and it still looks impeccable. As I said in a previous video, I prefer usually grainy leather because it normally doesn't scuff so easily. And I love the fact that the interior is actually in a, this like gorgeous grape or burgundy color. And it has like dividers and little pockets. And it's just like a super practical and easy bag to have. Like it's so easy to style this bag. And also it comes with two straps a shorter one to make it kind of like a shoulder bag and then the longer one i end up using it much more as a crossbody bag because i feel like i'm more crossbody bag girly than i am like shoulder bag and i also use this bag tons during the winter so for me just crossbody is usually easier to wear with uh thicker and chunkier coats here in new york so i end up not being like such a shoulder bag girly so talking about todd's we have this gorgeous straw bag i use this bag to travel tons because it fits just so much inside and it has like a little pocket that i actually removed from here because i just used the little pouch that came inside this bag as my you know just usual passport green card holder so i don't even keep this inside anymore i just keep it like stored in my closet with my travel documents uh, just like to illustrate how much I use this bag to travel. It fits all of my things. The, the kind of annoying part, but it doesn't annoy me so much because I travel usually with like a lot of mini bags inside my big bag, is that it has no dividers, just like everything sits loose inside the bag, but that doesn't bother me at all. Also, you're gonna say like, oh, you travel with this bag, but it doesn't have a zipper. But this is something that I love about this bag is that you can wear it both like this, like more open, like when you're going to the beach or just running errands around. Uh, or when you when I travel, I close this bag like there's, there are these side buttons that you can button them like this. So it kind of like transforms into a different shape of bag. And then you come with the main thing and close it like this. And then you can kind of like stick this thing here. And the bag is like, gets almost completely closed and you know, just pickpocket proof. 
<laughs> if you know what I mean. Now let's go on to the next and these are shoes. So I'm obviously gonna talk about these Roger Vivier boots and Roger Vivier if you're planning on investing on high quality designer shoes. I feel like Roger Vivier is a perfect brand for you to start with because they, especially if you're looking to get like stiletto heels, the Roger Vivier heels are some of the most comfortable heels that I've ever walked on like amongst all the designer brands. I feel like they are the most comfortable ones. I really like Manolo's also, but Roger Vivier are like, but Roger Vivier is my favorite. Like, needless to say, this like little brooch where it just gives, like elevates the whole thing and just gives food a touch of, you know. It's just a pop of something that makes your outfits look more interesting. So I would say I style a lot of my fall winter looks around these boots and they are like one of my favorite pairs. So no regrets at all, even though I was gifted. Moving on to our next pair of boots. These are the Fendi Rococo boots and I love them. I have to say like I love equestrian style boots for my everyday when it's fall or winter and these were the perfect pair because I really love all the logo details in the back because it doesn't show so much in the front. It's like business in the front and party in the back if you know what I mean and they are so comfortable, so 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 comfortable. You can see like how they're kind of beaten up and uh, just like showing how much I use these babies uh, when it's boot season. Still on Fendi, I have my little Fendi baguette that it's one of my favorite bags that I have currently. And I got this bag when the baguette was just starting to come out again. And this one is an actual vintage one. Uh, it's not like from the new collections. I definitely bought it pre-love, but it's actually a vintage pre-love which I really love about. And I got this bag for $300 before the price kind of like skyrocketed when baguettes became a thing again. So it was definitely one of my best purchases, at least at the time. So it was overall a really good purchase. And the size of it is really deceiving because you cannot believe how much I can fit inside this bag. So it ends up being a really nice everyday bag, but can also transition into an evening bag. So. I love, I'm all for versatile accessories, versatile bags, versatile shoes that can go like from day to night and this is one of them and it's so lightweight so I can bring around with me when I travel without being concerned about it occupying like too much space. Yeah, one of my favorite bags and so proud of this purchase. Okay, these were my favorite designer items that I have no regrets on buying or you know that I was gifted and really love wearing. So now we're gonna go into the items that I kind of regret buying and I don't like so much or wear so much. I know you're gonna come for me for this one, but the first purchase I really regret is the Chanel sling bags. I actually looked for it for so long. I couldn't find it to shop brand new on Chanel stores at the time. And so I really monitored every single day my favorite pre-love designer websites to find this pre-loved because I couldn't find it at the boutique. And I sized up actually, and they are so uncomfortable. I could never manage to actually like wear them. And I got them like, as you can see, not in the most perfect conditions. I know a lot of people really love these shoes and think they're like the most comfy shoes ever. But for me, they're exactly the opposite. They were so uncomfortable. I never managed to act. The one time I tried to go out wearing these, I had to like come back home and change shoes literally because I could not wear these any longer. So these are like, and I can't resell them because I already got them in not such a good state, not very good conditions, and I can't resell them because no pre-loved website will accept them back. I'm kind of stuck with it. They are a look, like when you, when I wear them, when I try clothes on and put them on just like for fun and just to see how they look like, they actually look really good on your feet and they match so many looks and they elevate looks. They add a pop of luxury into your outfit, that's for sure. They look really good when they're on, but they're just like so uncomfortable and it's unbearable for me to wear this. And I sized up, but they just like, 
they don't fit well with me maybe it's the shape of my foot i'm not really sure but yeah i definitely regret this one so this next one i'm sure a lot of you would will agree with me because they are uncomfortable as hell they are a little bit small for me i have to admit but i've talked to so many people that own Louboutins. this is the only pump that i have from them and they all agree with me that it's super uncomfortable i had like this morning when i was putting aside the items to to create this video i actually saw a little bit of blood here because uh, it really hurt me when i wore this last time but i think i managed to actually clean it out also can't seem to resell it because even though i found this so uncomfortable i wore this quite as much so um regret it but i actually got some use out of them like unlike the chanel sling bags next up is this prada velvet bag i'm not gonna say like I hate this bag because it's actually the, the opposite I actually really love to look at this bag I feel like it's so perfect and it looks so nice but this is one of these bags that I can't seem to style it with any look I feel like this is a very difficult color I'm not sure if you can see this properly but it's kind of like this purple that's not even burgundy it's like just straight out grape purple like i got this in germany honestly like 2012 2013 so it's been like 10 years it's still in perfect shape perfect conditions like the hardware still looks really good so like the quality is not something that we're arguing about here but it's just very hard to style this but also luckily when i bought this it was a time where prada bags were a little bit more affordable than they are nowadays so i didn't spend so much money on this one it was definitely less than a thousand dollars i think this was seven hundred dollars you can never get a prada bag for seven hundred dollars nowadays nowadays so definitely like not such a bad purchase but i just can't seem to style this bag with anything like even during the winter when this was actually like supposed to be worn because it's like velvet it's very winter like fall winter material but I can't seem to style it because of the color. So if you know, help me out. <laughs> Here we have another Chanel style. These are Chanel mules. They are actually very comfortable. I love the fact that the heels are thicker, but this is another pair of shoes that I didn't really seem to be able to style so much. And also I live in New York. I walk around a lot, like I don't have a car. It's very hard for me to go out wearing heels. Like even at night, I find myself wearing flat sneakers or whatever kind of shoes all the time. So I, I don't feel like there's room in my lifestyle for these mules i also got this second hand so they weren't crazy expensive but i have to say i did buy these kind of out of an, of an impulse i saw an influencer that i loved wearing this and then i started to hunt the pre-love market for these and then i finally got them at the real real but then i couldn't seem to style them so not a pair of shoes that i wore that much and i also got them in a pretty beaten up uh, condition so i um, i find it very hard to resell it again going into our next one is this miss dior bag so i got this one in 2013 so 10 years ago and i have to say i'm a bit disappointed but i feel like that actually proves my point of not getting any luxury items in lambskin because they just get damaged so quickly and i'm not that person that's gonna treat a bag like you know like a forbidden object or something i just treat a bag like a bag and i use it and i wear it i don't have this like oh my god i don't want to wear this bag because i don't want to damage it and blah blah like i will go and i will wear the bag a lot and i will really just treat it like a bag but yeah this one got a lot of marks so it looks like completely dark here in the back because of maybe rubbing with my jeans or with the clothes that i'm wearing that release a little bit of ink maybe onto the lambskin leather but yeah i don't actually like the way it held up like the test of it didn't stand the test of time so well if you have any recommendations of somewhere that I could take this to kind of try to revive this bag because I actually really liked the style I just don't really like how it stood the test of time so yeah but overall like yeah it, it is a good bag I just didn't love the fact that it's lambskin so I kind of would go for calfskin or like any sort of grainy leather instead of this one if I could go back in time you know so I think we covered pretty much everything like all the items that I had in mind 
that you know just stood out to me as my favorite and my least favorite items so i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and liked this video and i really hope you got to this point and watched it until now i really appreciate you guys watching until now and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe here to my channel i'm always posting content like fashion related lifestyle travel or beauty so don't forget to stay tuned to my next video and i really hope to see you guys on the next video bye